Well, boys and girls, hello there. Welcome to another story time. Our uh, Friday night First Bible Church story time. And we have a wonderful story for you tonight. Uh, sorry, a little, it's a little sweaty in here. We're doing it from uh, sitting on the floor of our living room um, after uh, my wife just finished a game of pickleball and, <laughs> and we had to take some gas to somebody who just ran out of gas out in front of our church, out in front of our house. So uh, a little bit sweaty, <laughs> but I know you're going to love the story tonight. Uh, it's a beautiful story. It's a true story. Uh, and it, um, it takes place in uh, the country of Nigeria. Uh, and uh, it's got a very funny title. We told the story this morning live for the children that were with us today. And um, of course, they all laughed at the, name, at the name of the story. It's called The Girl Who Sang in the Goat House. <laughs> the Girl Who Sang in the Goat House. And, um, and just in a minute, you'll understand why <laughs> it's called that. All right, so we're going to begin right now. All right. The Girl Who Sang in the goat house first of all boys and girls we want to just remind you here are just some pictures of children from all around the world and it's important to remember that not everybody lives the same way that we do in our country and children all over the world have uh, different ways of living different kinds of houses that they live in, different kinds of food that they, that they eat. And um, in many countries, like Nigeria, where our story takes place today, things are very, very different. The children there don't, uh, many of them don't even know about God. They've never heard about Jesus Christ. Many, many of them in Nigeria and many other countries have never heard the gospel. And, um, and the story tonight takes place in a village like that, uh, in Nigeria, where the people had never heard about the Lord. And that's why it's so important for us to send missionaries to these countries. Of course, a missionary is someone who goes uh, to another culture, to another land, to bring the gospel, to tell people in that country about the Lord Jesus Christ, to tell them how they can be saved, how they can have their sins forgiven. And praise the Lord for the missionaries that uh, have gone around the world, even Jesus Christ was kind of a missionary. He came all the way from heaven to this earth to bring the truth and to bring salvation to us. And of course, we're supposed to do the, th the same thing. The Bible tells us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And many missionaries have gone to Nigeria before. You might remember Many, many weeks ago, one of the stories that we told in story time was the story of Mary Slessor, and she was a missionary in the 1800s to the country of Nigeria. So there are quite a few Christians in Nigeria today, but there are still many parts of Nigeria that have never heard the gospel. Many villages that have, they don't know anything about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's very, very important that we send missionaries. Now I want to show you a map that gives you an idea of where Nigeria is. Um, of course, if you live in uh, New York or on the East Coast, you can kind of see that little red dot right there. That's us. And all the way on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, right over there in Africa, is the area of Nigeria. And that's where our story is going to take place tonight. Now, before we actually get into our story, I want you to see this verse from the Bible because later in the story, you're going to understand why this verse is so important. This verse in the book of Habakkuk says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And when the prophet Habakkuk wrote that, his country was in deep, deep trouble. If you read the book of Habakkuk, it's a very short book, but you'll see that his country was um, was suffering at that time. There was judgment from God. There was chastening. Things were not good in Israel when Habakkuk wrote this. In fact, Habakkuk describes some of the problems and troubles 
that the people of God were going through. But what this verse is saying is that even though they had all those troubles, in spite of all those troubles, Habakkuk said, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And you're going to see in this story why that verse is very, very important. Nervously straightening her dress, Wamdi stood outside the schoolroom door. Inside that door lay a whole new world, a world of pencils and paper and books. But it was a world of mystery and fear too. For inside that room was a Baturé. That's what her people called a white person. And her father told her the white person would swallow up Wamdi's spirit if she got too close. This is what many people in Wamdi's village in the African country of Nigeria believed. They believed bad things would happen to you if you talked with the missionary or went to the missionary school. But Wamdi was curious, so curious, in fact, that she was willing to take a chance and find out for herself what the world was like inside the schoolroom. Her eyes were glowing with excitement at the prospect of trying something new. So she slipped through the door. She stayed in the back of the room, hoping the missionary teacher would not notice her. But the missionary teacher, Miss Francis, did notice Wamdi. Hello, she said kindly. You can come in and have a seat if you'd like. Slowly, Wamdi walked forward. Miss Francis, the missionary, showed her where she could sit down and handed her a pencil and a paper. Wamdi awkwardly held the slender wooden pencil in her hand. She thought about the bad things she heard would happen to her if she talked to the missionary or joined their school. Wamdi shivered at the thought of what might happen, but she decided to stay anyway. Then Miss Francis said, Now, Wamdi, this is how you write the first letter of the alphabet of your language. Wamdi was learning how to make her letters and learn her language so that she could read. And of course, being able to read is very, very important. And of course, God gave us the ability to read mostly so that we could read his word. That's the most important thing of all for us to read. And that's why the missionaries taught these children how to read so that they could read the Bible. Miss Francis said, as she placed the pencil correctly in Wamdi's hand, and guided her fingers. Wamdi looked at her hand and Miss Francis's hand covering it. How warm and friendly it felt. Forgetting her fear and shyness, she smiled up at the kind face of the missionary. And Miss Francis smiled back. Before Wamdi left that day, Miss Francis invited her to come back the next day. Well, the days and the months passed by quickly. Wamdi was learning to read. She kept going back to the missionary school and learning from Miss Francis. And now, now she could read from the Bible. This was the only printed book her Tangali people in Nigeria had in their language at the time. She loved to hear Miss Francis teach from the Bible. Every day she heard the story of God's love. And many times she heard the teacher say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that was in John chapter 3, verse 16. Miss Francis said, God's love is so great that he gave his Son to die for our sins. The wrong things we do, that's what sins were. He came to die in your place to suffer for you. Wamdi always listened to this story with great joy in her heart. But how could anyone love her so much? She had done so many wrong things, things Miss Francis called sins. Wamdi's family worshipped a false god. 
and Wamdi was taught that this god was cruel and was always punishing people. Her people said their god was evil and unloving. She had been taught that he brought bad luck and sicknesses like smallpox and chickenpox. And when anyone was sick, the Dengali people always said, our god did it. The people were very afraid of their god, but they didn't know that he wasn't a real god. Wamdi did not love the false god her people worshipped, but the one true god Miss Francis told her about loved Wamdi. He is the living god. He sent his son to die for her. She knew she could love this god. Miss Francis said, the Lord Jesus died for you and came alive again to save you from sin, not because you are a good person or deserve his love. He loves you and wants you, you to have your sins forgiven. He wants to have a relationship with you and you can love him because he first loved you. One day, Wamdi was sitting quietly all by herself under a tree reading her Bible. And as she read about Jesus, she thought, I know I do many things that are wrong and sinful. I want the Lord Jesus to be my Savior and forgive me for doing these things. I want to love God, who is good and kind. Right then, under that tree, Wamdi believed in the Lord Jesus to be her Savior and take away her sins. When Wamdi called upon the Lord to save her, she looked up at her friends, looked all around her. Everything looked the same. The hot sun was still beating down on the little houses in the village. The children were still running back and forth playing ball. The people still look the same, but Wamdi was different. She felt very different inside, and she knew now that she could not do those bad things she used to do. She wanted to please the Lord Jesus Christ. She was so happy inside. One day, soon after Wamdi got saved, her parents asked her to do something that she knew was very wrong. It was something very bad, and Wamdi did not want to sin against the Lord. What do you think Wamdi should do? When Wamdi's father told her to do that bad thing that Wamdi knew was wrong, Wamdi said, no, I can't do that. I belong to the Lord Jesus now. She knew that following Jesus was doing what he wanted her to do and that that was the most important thing. Well, boys and girls, this made her father furious at her for being disobedient and for disobeying him. And he grabbed her very roughly and began to hit her with a heavy stick, sadly. And that made cuts and bruises on Wamdi's back her father threw her into the family's small, smelly goat house, and the goats bleated as Wamdi was thrown in. Wamdi was in the goat house for many days. Her father would not let her out, and she became hungry, but no one in her family would help her. Her sister would even spit on her as she walked by. Her brothers would not even speak to her, and her friends would have nothing to do with her. Wamdi asked herself, is Jesus worth being hungry and thirsty for? Is he worth being beaten for and hated by my family? Wamdi was thinking about the cost of following the Lord Jesus. Was she willing to go through hard times to obey him? As she thought, she remembered Jesus' love for her. He loved her so much, he died for her. Wamdi knew as she was locked inside the goat house with the goats that she was not really alone. Her father may have hated her and beaten her. Her sister spit on her. 
Her brother made fun of her. The villagers made fun of her. But Wamdi knew that the Lord was with her. She remembered Miss Francis saying that even when bad things happen, Jesus would never leave her. Jesus was with her even in the goat house. She remembered the verse Miss Francis had taught her. The verse says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Boys and girls, that is such a precious promise in God's word. Think about that. God promises never to leave us. He will not leave his own. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Each day, Wamdi's father came to the goat house and asked her, Have you changed your mind about following Jesus? But each day, Wamdi just straightened up her shoulders, and she refused to change her mind. Wamdi decided, Even if they kill me, I will not stop following Jesus. I wonder what will happen to Wamdi. Boys and girls, do you think that she will continue to follow Jesus? Do you think her father will ever let her out of the goat house? Well, before we go on with the story, let me just remind you that just like God was with Wamdi, even when she was suffering, God is with you and he knows what you might be going through. Maybe you live in difficult circumstances. I know some of the children that listen to this program have sickness and serious illness, and maybe your circumstances are very bad right now. But boys and girls, whatever you might be going through, whatever you might be dealing with in life, I want you to remember this, that God loves you, and He's with you, and He cares about you. You can talk to God about the hard things that you are facing, you can talk to an adult that you trust, and they can help you too. But just remember that you can talk to God any time. And He's listening. You can speak to Him. And you can pour out your heart to Him, just like Wamdi did. And the Lord will listen and help you. While Wamdi was locked in the goat house, she decided that even if they killed her, she would not stop following Jesus. They did not make Wamdi's, that does not make Wamdi's father happy. He beat her again and left her in the goat house. But Wamdi kept thinking how much the Lord Jesus had done for her. Then she remembered a Bible verse Miss Francis had taught her. The verse said, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. That night, Wamdi began to sing a song about God. Her clear voice rang out in the blackness of the night. She sang and sang and sang her little heart out. People woke up wondering who was singing such a sweet song. They pushed open their doors and came out into the darkness. Who was singing, they asked one another. It's Wamdi in the goat house. Whispering to each other, the people listened as Wamdi sang praises to God. Finally, Wamdi's father came out of the house too. He had been listening to Wamdi singing, and it made him feel very bad for what he had done. Quickly, he walked to the goat house and let Wamdi out. She was very bruised and very weak from hunger, but Wamdi was very happy. When Wamdi was in the goat house, she made the choice to follow God no matter what happened. Well, as Wamdi grew up, she continued to follow the Lord. She continued to learn his word, and she continued to love her Savior very much. God gave her also a great love for her people. She wanted everyone in her village. She wanted everyone around her village to know about Jesus Christ. So Wamdi, as she grew older, 
began to walk up and down through the hills all around her village, telling everybody about Jesus every chance she could. She was sharing God's love with everyone and telling them about the Savior who had died for them. One day, Wamdi even brought her nearly blind mother into the missionary's church. What a joy it was to her heart when her mother sat and listened to the word of God. Then her older sister, the one who had spit on her when she was in the goat house, even her sister came to church and believed in Jesus Christ. And her life was changed just as Wamdi's life had been changed. Many of Wamdi's family members and friends became followers of Jesus because of Wamdi's life and her love for the Lord Jesus. Not only had she told them about the Lord Jesus, but she was also willing to suffer for him, and everyone in the village knew it. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this story it's a true story. It happened not long ago in the country of Nigeria. But before we close for tonight, I just want to ask you this question. Have you trusted the Lord Jesus as your Savior? Just like we told you in this story, Jesus Christ loved you and came from heaven to suffer and die to pay for your sins on the cross. But you must trust him yourself. Your mom and dad may have already trusted Jesus Christ, but that does not get you to heaven. My mom and dad were Christians when I was a child, but their Christianity couldn't get me to heaven. I had to trust Jesus Christ for myself, and so do you. You have to understand that you're a sinner. You have to understand that God hates sin. And God punishes sin. But God loves you. He loves the sinner. And so Jesus Christ came to die for sinners so that we did not have to be punished and go to hell. God didn't want us to go to hell. So he allowed his son to pay that penalty for us. If you have already trusted Jesus as your Savior, then I hope you will also trust him if you are going through any hard times, maybe you're suffering things right now, but I want you to remember the same Jesus who saved you will also keep you and take care of you no matter what you're going through. Just trust him. And even though things might be bad, maybe maybe not. Maybe now everything in your life is, is just wonderful. But if you're going through any kind of a hard time, I want you to remember that even in a hard time, you can still rejoice in the Lord. You can joy in God, our Savior. And I hope that you will. I hope you know Him as your Savior. I hope if you don't know Him as your Savior, that you'll ask mom and dad how you can know more about trusting Jesus, how you can know more about being saved, and if you have any questions or mom and dad have any questions, then they can surely call me or Miss Margaret, and uh, we'd be happy to help. But I hope you enjoyed the story, and I hope you remember the girl who sang in the goat house. And we're going to turn the camera around so that we can say good night. Good night, boys and girls. And thank you for being with us again. We love you, and we will see you next time. All right. God bless you.